we have a solid disk, which is the um, which is a pulley. And we have two masses hanging from our disk here. We have what we'll call mass one and mass two. We know the mass of the first one is 1.0 kilograms. We know the mass of the second one is 2.0 kilograms. The mass of the pulley is equal to 0 0.50 kilograms. Let's say we know the radius of the pulley is 25 centimeters. I want to know a couple of things. First off, what are the tensions in the ropes and what is the acceleration of the system? If you recall, the tensions that act uh, on both sides of this pulley have been the same all along, correct? What has been true that made those the same? A massless and frictionless pulley. Is this a massless pulley? No. Welcome to no longer having tensions be the same on both sides because we now have pulleys that have mass. So we have our pulley here. Uh, so it's a solid disc. So the moment of inertia about the center of mass of a solid disc is 1 half mr squared. And we are going to sum the torques. In order to do so, we need a free body diagram. So please give me the free body diagram of all the forces acting on all the various objects here. We'll start with Sierra. Give me a force acting on something. Um, there's a force of gravity going down on both of the masses. Okay. So we're going to have a force of gravity 1 and a force of gravity 2 acting on each of the masses. Keep going. Sierra. Uh, there will also be a force of gravity on there is also a force of gravity on the pulley itself. Um, tensions both going up. We have a tension on each one of the objects. I'll call this one tension one and this one tension two. Well, but tor torque is not a force. So torque is something separate that has to do with summing the force or summing the torques. We're still working on the forces. There are three more forces in our free body diagram. Who wants to help them out? Three more forces in our free body diagram, Vlad. Well, there's friction. I think. Ah, uh, actually, we're gonna have. It's gonna be frictionless. So we'll have a frictionless pulley. That'll be nice. <laughs> Other forces, Jake. There's tensions going down from the pulley. There are tensions going down. Tension one and tension two acting down on the pulley. Go ahead. Force normal going up on the pulley. Something going up on the pulley. We can call it a force normal. We can call it a force applied. Whatever's holding it up. There's got to be a force holding the pulley up. Otherwise, it would move down. There is our free body diagram. We are now going to start by summing the torques on the pulley. So notice we're summing the forces on the object. The object is the pulley, and our axis of rotation is the middle of the pulley, center of mass of the pulley. When we sum the torques on the pulley itself, what torques do we have? We have a torque do what, torque do what, torque do whatever. Give me the Loki. But we need to talk about the forces, the torque due to which forces? Okay, so we have a torque due to tension one, torque due to tension two. Help them out. So far we have torque due to tension one, torque due to tension two. It may seem obvious, but we need to make sure this is complete so that we can see why some things are going to cancel out here. I want to write them down so we can cancel them out. Torque due to force of gravity. Torque due to force of gravity. Which force of gravity? The 
pulley and the torque due to the force normal. This whole thing is going to be equal to the moment of inertia of the pulley times the angular acceleration of the pulley. Now, we need to decide on positives versus negatives. Which direction class do we think that this thing is going to rotate? Clockwise. That thing's going clockwise. Right into the board. Into the board. Oh. <laughs> I think we need a review on the right hand rule. <laughs> Flat. Is the wheel spinning clockwise or counterclockwise? No, dude. Okay. Tyler? It's I'm sorry. Vlad, what'd you say? <laughs> Tyler? It's counterclockwise. Wait. They don't seem to agree. Why? Because it all depends on where you're looking at. So it turns out that clockwise and counterclockwise are not very good descriptions of this. So we use what class? The right hand rule. The right hand rule. The right hand rule. Who can tell me the first the first impediment to using the right hand rule? You have a hard time finding your right hand, so first hold up your right hand. <laughs> the second impediment to using the right hand rule. <laughs> Some of you are too cool for the right hand rule. Limber up. Remember there's nothing cooler than not moving your shoulders when using the right hand rule, right? There's nothing cooler. So remember, when you're using the right hand rule, you got to limber up. Okay, so the way the right hand rule works is this. The wheel is spinning, you take your right hand, you curl your fingers in the direction of the right hand. The wheel is spinning, and notice no matter where you are standing, your thumb is pointing to that way, right? And that makes this wheel that it's spinning that way. That's the description of the direction this wheel is spinning. If we turn it the other way, it would be in the positive x direction. Let's do this one. <laughs> this one's going up, this one is spinning, down, as you can see, we have all of them, right? This one's spinning. Yeah, you, you gotta move your body, remember? You're not too cool for the right hand rule. Very good. Okay, so this is the right hand rule. So this, we would expect to rotate, would you agree, this way, which would be into the board. So, the way we identify that we would assume that that is the positive direction is we're going to write one of these. This is very important. It identifies that that is what we're thinking is the positive direction. Given that that is the positive direction, torque due to tension one nitish is positive or negative? Uh, negative. Negative torque due to tension two nitish? Positive. What about the torque due to force of gravity of the pulley? It cancel out. Ah, uh, it's not that they cancel out. That's actually not correct in this particular case. Um, Nick? They're both zero. They're both zero. Why? Because the, uh, lever arm is zero. the lever arm is zero. They're both, both of these forces are acting at the axis of rotation, so the lever arm is equal to zero. So what we end up with here is that the negative of the torque due to tension one plus the torque due to tension two is equal to the moment of inertia of the pulley times the angular acceleration of the pulley. So we have negative tension one times the lever arm of one times the sine of theta one plus the tension for two times the lever arm for two times the sine theta for two equals the moment of inertia of the pulley, which is one half times the mass of the pulley times the radius of the pulley squared times alpha. Okay, uh, let's see, from left to right, we don't know tension one. What do we know, uh, what is lever arm one in this particular case? <laughs> Bless you. Uh, Emily? Would it be F or would it be I? It's just going to be the radius of the pulley, which we've labeled as a capital R. So it's going to be just capital R. Times the sine of, Emily, what's the angle between the tension force and the lever arm? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Notice this is going to be a 90 degree angle right here. So the sine of 90. Plus tension 2 times lever arm for 2, Henry? Um, just R again. 
But again, it's just r times the sine of what angle? Again, it's just 90 degrees. So we have 1 half times the mass of the pulley, and the radius of the pulley, we actually just labeled r, so we have r squared times alpha. Everyone brought radius to the party. Very nice. <laughs> All right, we can cancel out the sine of 90, but we can also cancel out the radius because everyone brought radius to the party. So we end up with negative tension 1 plus tension 2 equals the mass of the pulley times r times alpha, this whole thing divided by 2. Uh, we don't know tension 1 or tension 2. We don't know alpha. I don't know, there's a whole bunch of stuff we don't know about that. So where should we put this? Equation holster. Equation holster. Equation holster. Okay, that's summing the torques. What else can we do with uh, this whole setup here? Door step. Okay. Yep. Uh... I'll give you a hint, we drew a free body bag. We can not only sum the torques, but we can also sum the forces. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sum the forces uh, in what we're going to call, I guess we'll call it the y direction, but we need to be careful here because we need to be consistent because the y direction over here, this is positive, whereas here, this is positive, right? To be consistent with the direction we've identified as positive. So actually I'm going to call that the tangential direction rather than the y direction because I think that's a better description of it. So the sum of the forces in the tangential direction, and we will sum the forces on just mass one. So sum the forces on mass one for me, Travis. Um, tension one minus uh, minus force of gravity one equals mass. Sorry. So ma what mass? Mass one times the acceleration. We only have one acceleration. I suppose I'll call it the tangential acceleration, but it's the acceleration of the system. All right. So we have tension one minus mass one times the acceleration of gravity equals mass one times acceleration tangential. So we know tension one then is equal to m1 times g uh, plus m1 times a t. Okay. Cool. Yay. <laughs> All right, so now we'll sum the forces in the tangential direction on mass two. Please do this one, Hillary. Notice that the force of gravity 2 is positive and the tension 2 is negative. That's equal to? Mass 2 times acceleration. Good. Uh, so this is mass 2 times the acceleration of gravity minus tension 2 is equal to mass 2 times the acceleration in the tangential direction. Therefore, tension 2 is equal to mass 2 times the acceleration of gravity minus mass 2 times the acceleration in the tangential direction. We can come all the way back to this equation, negative tension one plus tension two equals the mass of the pulley times r times alpha divided by two. And lo and behold, we can substitute both of these into this equation. And we get ten negative of the quantity m1 times g plus m1 times the acceleration in the tangential direction plus the quantity mass two times the acceleration of gravity minus mass 2 times the acceleration in the natural direction equals the mass of the pulley times the radius times the alpha divided by 2. Looking at this, we have a problem. We know all the masses, but we don't know the tangent, we don't know the acceleration nor the angular acceleration. tangential acceleration equals the radius times the angular acceleration. So we can substitute for the radius times the angular acceleration with tangential acceleration. So we get, uh, we'll multiply through here, negative one, negative m1 times g minus mass one times the tangential acceleration plus mass two times g minus mass two times the tangential acceleration equals one half times the mass of the pulley. Now we can replace the r times alpha with the tangential acceleration. 
So all we need to do now is solve for a sub t. We get negative m1 times g plus mass 2 times g equals mass 1 times acceleration plus mass 2 times acceleration plus 1 half times the mass of the pulley times acceleration in the tangential direction. Uh, so negative m1 times g plus mass 2 times g equals the tangential acceleration times the mass 1 plus mass 2 plus the mass of the pulley divided by 2. We get the tangential acceleration equals negative m1 times g plus mass 2 times g divided by m1 plus m2 plus the mass of the pulley divided by 2. Yeah. Oh, have fun. Good luck, man. Good luck, man. I believe in you. <laughs> so, we actually know all this stuff. In the absence of numbers, we could just do that. But we have numbers. So <laughs> negative 1 times 9.8 plus 2 times 9.8 divided by 1 plus 2 plus mass pulley was half a kilogram. 0.5 divided by 2. Acceleration is 3.02 meters per second squared. Great. Now, I want to point something out. If you recall, tension 1 would equal tension 2 if what were true? Tension 1 would equal tension 2 if what were true? Tim? If the pulley were massless. If the pulley were massless. Right? If the pulley were massless, this would go to zero, and tension one would equal tension two. Right? Uh, part of this question was to figure out the two tensions, tension one and tension two. If you look, I'm actually not going to go through and do that. It would just be plugging in the numbers into this equation, and to this equation we actually have those. In the interest of time, I'm not going to take the time to do that, but you can see that would be relatively easy to do. True? Okay. I do want to highlight some things that you can't do in this problem and why. One thing you can't do is sum the torques on the whole thing, which would be equal to the negative torque due to the force of gravity 1, plus the torque due to tension 1, minus the torque due to tension 1, plus the torque due to tension 2, minus the torque due to tension 2, plus the torque due to force of gravity 2, equals I times alpha, not including these two guys, which we know are 0. Why can't we do this? It's important to understand why we cannot do this. Jenkins. Because mass one and mass two are rotating. Equals I times alpha. Mass one and mass two are not, they don't have an angular acceleration, right? These two guys aren't moving angularly. So this doesn't make sense. What about this one? Sum the forces in the tangential direction on the whole thing. So again, we have negative force of gravity 1 plus tension 1 minus tension 1 plus tension 2 minus tension 2 plus force of gravity 2 equals mass 1 plus mass 2 plus the mass of the pulley times the acceleration in the tangential direction. Why can't we do this? Make it again. The uh, pulley doesn't move like accelerate tangentially. The, pulley, parts of the, the whole the pulley does accelerate tangentially, but not at the same rate. Notice every piece of the pulley is going to be accelerating tangentially, but every point on the wheel has a different tangential acceleration depending on its radius. So the whole pulley doesn't have a constant tangential acceleration, so this doesn't work. So you do have to split them up like we did in class today. You can't do them all at once. Why didn't the first one work? There was no rotation. Because mass 1 and mass 2 are, don't have a, an angular acceleration. So that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. 